All right, my friends, welcome to episode number 199, the last of the 100s. I'm the professor at Prof Plays Games, and he is the dev at Summer Speak. He's Anthony. I am Larry. And we have been talking about games done quick all week, texting, watching VODs, watching live. What a crazy week it's been for speedrunning. Uh, it is, and I absolutely love these weeks. We get We get this twice a year, and I love it. And it's not something... I can't remember when I started watching. It was probably like oh, it's 2019 now, five years ago. Mm -hmm. It was probably the first introduction I ever had to, and that was for Awesome Games Done Quick. And me, and that's after I left PopCap, and me and two other guys, we were just sitting in his basement and like, oh, the streamer that we know, they're doing a speedrun. Oh, what's this thing? Oh, it's this con this charity drive. And then we just sat in the entire week that we were working. We were just had that on like the TV streaming at the same time. And ever since then, it's just something that I love to just watch because um, so much fun. <laughs> well, it's crazy just to see the amount of skill and the way that it's presented makes you realize very quickly that this person has played through this game about nine million times. Oh, to yeah. Get it, you know, just to, to burnish the edges of this rough gem and just present this amazing run. Yeah, and it's I, I crazy the amount of time that they dedicate to one game. <sighs> right. And... Uh, Sometimes I think, okay, a game like Chrono Trigger or Portal 2 or whatever, like these are just amazing games that, that it's fun to play that game over and over, I guess, even though eventually it'd probably get monotonous. But some of the games that they run through are games like, I don't know, Rygar, I don't, Jackal. I'm not sure how great those games are. I'm sure they are good, but I don't really know them that well. You know, they're not in like yeah. the upper echelon, of course. Like there's one called the Texturist, Textorcist, yeah. I mean, um, just by name alone, I think more obscure but probably fun for that person i guess but i, don't know, I wonder if there's something to being a speedrunner for a game that is less popular because there's less competition to kind of stand out for that game maybe there's probably some of that and more the ability for you to discover things because mm -hmm. oh, like the, the games that are super popular you have big communities around them and they talk about this like whenever you watch runs on here of like of popular games like uh the breath of the wild run that they did right. um well, they'll talk that like, oh, the community found this new skip. We saved a, it saved a couple seconds or this person found that. And so you ha it's a different thing when that's this entire community working together to find all the different strategies. And while you may never have like the world record in it, you get that community thing. But if you go to a more obscure thing, you can be the one going like, look at all this crazy stuff I found. Um, and it seems like it becomes more of a challenge in that way um, right. with a smaller, a smaller group of people trying to run a certain game um but it doesn't mean they're bad actually some of the runs of really somewhat horrible games are hilarious um yeah because part of it is, i mean not just the skill to getting through it but like the commentary and like the details yeah. and information you learn like all that's really entertaining yeah i think it was last yeah it was last uh sgdq uh youtuber who does a lot of movie stuff but also loves playing just horrible video games like completely what you would consider garbage bin video games <laughs> yeah uh -huh. just loves them um, just because they're so terrible or buggy. He sped run this other game. I think it was called like Amy. And it was the most broken thing out there. But it was hilarious to watch him run it and go like, <laughs> look at how broken this game is. And look at all the stupid things you can do to get right. through this. And he's like, I'm never going to play this game again. But uh, he got to be on stage and uh, just basically, it was basically just a comedy t thing for like an hour of him just being like, let's let's all look at how how messed up this whole thing is and how we can't even believe this got packaged and shipped on any Almost system. Like <laughs> Mystery Science Theater 3000 for video yeah, games. it was. Except for you had to play through it. <laughs> yeah, and this year had something like that. I don't know if you saw it. It was before the Chrono Trigger run. Uh, which I didn't see it. Was the, uh, uh, it was the Super Metroid uh, Link to the Past plus Super oh. Metroid combo randomizer. It was one of the uh -huh. funniest runs I've ever seen. It was a race. Oh. And I've never seen someone in, in a race get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's That's like, I have fun. to go take a poop. <laughs> it's just, let's go. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta, but I mean, it was one, it's just, you're like, how are they, what is this randomizer that combines these two games, which it does. And it's crazy. Um, will you switch between playing both games in different ways and swaps yeah. you back and forth between them? And you have to get, and all the dungeons are randomized and weird. But God, the cow, it was, it was, uh, 
I think it took him, yeah, about, it's two hours and th- almost three hours of just comedy gold. Like, the couch was hilarious. Um, they were doing karaoke and horrible things. <laughs> it was, if you want to watch anything, if you just want humor, that run was incredible from a humor, humor standpoint. Oh, I was laughing so much during it. Um, it kind of reminds me of chess boxing, where, like, you play one round of chess, one round of boxing, and it's just, yeah. like, back, it's not random, but, like, two kind of wildly different things happening at yeah. the same time. Oh, yeah, that's where they did the, something was like, fine, if someone donates $500, I'll, I will sing Kiss from a Rose. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he totally just sang a couple, a couple, uh, the chorus and a couple verses of Kiss from a Rose, and it was so bad, but it was hilarious, <laughs> because they got, like, he did that, and I think there was, like, five $500 donations came in within minutes <laughs> to make sure it happened. <laughs> so great to, like, raise money for Doctors uh-huh. Without Border. Yeah, Doctors they, Without Borders and I mean, in such a fun way. I guess we should say, it, they hit $3 million. It's the most they've ever hit, I any, think. From any of them. Yeah, right. this is insane. A lot of times, Summer Games Done Quick does tends to do lower than Awesome Games Done Quick in January. Why is that? I just think People it's the time for summer. Or yeah, what? basically. Yeah. Um, I think that's mostly it. And they've, in the past, it always felt like Awesome Games Done Quick was the premier event of the year where Summer Games Done Quick was not... They didn't put any less work into it, but it was the secondary one, because they're, it always it started with the, the January one back in the day. Um, but either way, this is an insane amount of money. They raised quite a bit more than they've made before. Like, just destroyed their record by like 800000 yeah. or something. Right. And it's just so cool to see people come come together around yeah. our, our hobby, in effect, and then just raise that much money for a good cause. Yeah. <clears throat> I donated during the Chrono Trigger... That's the first time I donated all week, except for when I purchased a t-shirt through the yep. Yeti. Got my so, t-shirt. Uh, which one did you get be. again? I, I got the controller one, the more oh, yeah. stylized okay. one. Um, yeah, that's the same one that Brad got. I, I tend to like shirts that are more stylized than having mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff on them. Um, yeah, I got a stylized one last time during a or Awesome Games Done Quick, so I wanted to get something that had something one of the games, basically, and it yeah. had that NES remake Chrono Trigger. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I want a shirt with Chrono Trigger on it. Man, watching that Chrono Trigger run made me want to replay Chrono Trigger pretty uh-huh. badly. Oh, uh, I mean, I just want to, I just like, God, I love this music. The music in that game is so good. good. And everyone talks about the music good. And we were, we were playing through it. And I'm like, yeah, this music is good. But I realize now, months and months and months later, when you hear that music, I'm like, oh, that was so good. <laughs> like, it's just taken a while to really sink in. And I'm just like, I get why people absolutely love this soundtrack. Um and the game itself. The game is really good. Um, but he is just a crazy good speedrunner for... Like, pixel he, he perfect. Speed runs, yeah. He was like pausing it, like, trying to get that, that perfect pixel to go past that rock or the enemy uh-huh. uh, in the dactyl nest. Yep. That was crazy. There's that. Um, like Just places where he's just running through, and I'm like, I didn't even realize you could avoid that fight completely. Like, right. How did you even do that? Well, and someone was talking about, I think it was on that stream, where they're like, you know, he does a lot of RPG or JRPGs. Yeah. Uh, of course, but then this one doesn't have any random encounter, so it makes it a little less tedious. Yes, you can just, I mean, it clearly, it allows for routing, really good routing, because you don't have to deal with random encounters. You can route through the encounters, um, which is just crazy to watch. Yeah, um, that one was really cool. I donated during uh, Minecraft, because my kids, all week, uh, they were like, one, my kids love this as well, and they get a little extra screen time so that they can watch uh, appropriate speed speed runs. But we're going through the schedule on stuff that I'm like, okay, you guys could watch this. It's the right time of the day, the whole thing. And we came across Minecraft on Friday morning. And first thing I turned to my son was going, hey, there's a Minecraft speed run. Does Minecraft end? Does it have an ending? And then he's like, yeah, of course it does. You beat the (laughs) dragon. And I'm like, God, I'm an old, I'm an idiot. (laughs) Thanks for telling me son oh he felt very game. proud he knew he knew I actually more about was gonna ask the same thing i didn't realize there wasn't any there's technically thing. an ending beating the dra- i don't think the game doesn't like your world doesn't end you can yeah, still keep course. playing after but the actual like what is considered the end of the game is beating the uh the elder dragon or ender dragon mm-hmm. whatever it's called um yeah. and this so they were super excited to watch this all week being like yeah minecraft's gonna happen and so uh I donated, and then they pitched in. They wanted to put some of their allowance to it as well. Mm. So we did a, a a combined donation, and I put a comment in about how they've been looking forward to this all week, and they really, really wanted to donate during it. And 
like all the good. Just, they're very excited and about uh, SGDQ. Uh, and it got read on air. That's awesome. I wasn't up, actually upstairs to hear it. I was in a meeting, com- a meeting. They were watching. I was in a meeting and I came back upstairs after my meeting and it was still going. They're like, they read, they read it. <laughs> they were so happy. Oh my God. They must've been so excited. They were, they're like, it's us. <laughs> Cause it's just, it's just random. Which ones they read, right? I, I think so. I mean, they screen them. Yeah. So I think they'll, it's somewhat random and somewhat chosen as well. Mm-hmm. Like they'll, they'll read ones that maybe, uh, are either funny or, uh, poignant for whatever reason. Right. Um, so, yeah, I guess I guess what I meant is they don't read all of them. They they can't. There's no yeah, way they can read too them many. all. Yeah. Um but yeah, that was really fun. And yeah, my kids had a great time watching just different ones. Uh Super Mario Brothers two the first day. I watched that one too. That one's a great one. Oh god, I remember that game so much. Like they were just going through it and I was like, Oh my god, it's been so long since I played this game. And that music is just so deep in my brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm hoping that uh Mario Maker 2 brings in the Super Mario Brothers 2 style in some way. Yeah. I, I don't know how that's going to happen, but it would like, be a please. significant significant change to yeah. the style. Oh, there was something on here that I was watching cuz we were trying to figure it out. It was a uh a Mario like race that happened one of the days, but it was uh basically what it it was ROM hacking Super mm-hmm. Mario World. And so there's a bunch of ROM hacks out for the game. They're explaining it. And it's been there for a very long time where people basically ROM hack Mario World to make custom levels. Hmm. And I'm almost, uh, it was a blind relay race. There it is. Super Mario blind relay race. So these people had not seen the actual levels. And there are Mario Maker hard levels. Just insane. But I realized that this is probably where the idea of Mario Maker came from. Right. Like Mario Maker, Mario Maker is basically what these people were doing to, like, hack the actual ROMs to make their own levels. Huh. Um, and their own custom, their custom maps. And then so challenge Nintendo each- looked at that and then... I have to believe that that's part of it. Yeah. Because I just watched them. I was like, oh, I get it. And it's interesting they did it here, because in previous year, last year, they used Mario Maker. They did a Mario Maker uh, blind relay as well. Crazy. Bl- by blind, they're not playing blind. They just don't know the they levels. They didn't see they, the level. Yeah. They don't know what the levels they're going to be. They're like pre-chosen to right. be a specific thing. These people are just really good players. Um, and then the the relay part is there's four of them on each team, and each time you die, you have to rotate to the mm-hmm. next person. Right. So, um, but it was crazy to watch. These levels are super hard. <laughs> yeah, Mario Maker, like the the community around Mario Maker on the Wii was crazy. Where you know, some of the there's some bullshit hard levels, but just in general, like trying to create hard levels that were doable and watching people yeah. kind of go on stream and beat those. Like I'm I'm so looking forward to that popping up around two, because two is significantly better than one, which we'll talk about later. Um in what I'm playing this week. But yeah. There's so much to that game. They just threw almost everything into it that people wanted. And that's cool. Uh, I'm glad. I'm I'm tempted at some point. Maybe this maybe it'll be a fall purchase. Mm-hmm. I think my kids would enjoy it too. Yeah, and it's just infinite, right? Yeah. You know, people keep creating content, of course, but even using it to do speed runs or using it to do some sort of contest or competition, like, it could never be the same twice. It's just yeah. it's just kind of the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, what else did I see? Oh, they, they one of the bonus games was uh, Tazbot playing Celeste for all oh, the fairies. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. I mean, I know I, that it's an AI, a programmed AI, where they've gone and frame perfect done it. But God, it just makes Celeste look insane. It, it when absolutely doing. does. I remember they did it for Awesome Games on Quick, I believe. Um, yeah. And it's just <laughs> it blows my mind how they even get that shit to work. Uh, yeah, they they did a couple Tazbot things. The the Mario Kart Wii one. There was. Oh yeah. That was just like you're like the crazy skips that they were that they could do. It, you can consistently do if it's a computer that knows exactly the frame to do stuff on. Um. Yeah. I don't know. There's just. I can't say enough about this organization and what they're doing, and I'm really happy to see it keep growing every yeah, year, time and time again, which is clearly there's more people watching video games. Right. And there's more, like, just knowledge of the speedrunning community year after year. So it doesn't surprise me that it keeps growing, but 
and, and also just the idea that like it's a fun thing like they really incentivize people to donate by coming up with some crazy fun incentives not just yes. in game like naming things like last night when they yeah. named the epoch tupac, tupac. was <laughs> fucking perfect i my, was gonna put my money toward that and i was like it's already winning far and away i'm gonna put my money toward the other thing there's no way it wouldn't win it's such a good name <laughs> it's so perfect um and then also like the prize incentives um yeah like if you donated ten dollars during, I don't know if you were listening, but during Chrono, Chrono Trigger, Trigger, if you donated yep. ten dollars, you got put into a drawing for the three consoles. Yeah, it was just all three of them. Not yeah. I was like, oh, it's, is it three separate drawings for a console? No, it's one drawing, and you get all current gen consoles. Right. It's like okay, yeah, no, on that was of, great. On top of getting into the lotto for like a bunch of other Chrono Trigger related art and yeah other stuff, um, it's cool. There's so many incentives that it's kind of like I don't know. If you like video games, you have a, it's just a raffle basically, yeah. and the money goes to a good cause. So that it's on true. top of getting people to do weird shit for sending them money, like singing seal songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the when the couch and the runners are like, yeah, just you know what, I'm just gonna make something right now. If we get a donation of this amount, I'm I'll do this. Fine, <laughs> we'll just do it. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's definitely got to the point where like the mix of games they have, it's like you can find a game. There's a game in here, and this week for everyone. Like, oh, yeah, doesn't absolutely. matter your genre, what you're interested in, like, do you like play or not? There's a game. It, it's in here. Um, Like, even small stuff where I was like, oh, there wouldn't be an, like, RTS or not. There was a StarCraft 2 run in it. Well, there's also the no, StarCraft uh, not Star- a StarCraft 1 run, remastered. It right, was the exactly. uh, Protoss Brood-, Brood War campaign. And, again, you watch it, and I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous how this person beat these levels. Right. Um. But yeah, it was like that even surprised me because, yeah, you always expect the platformers and everything, but rarely do you expect strategy games and things like that. Yeah, it's really broadening, broadening the appeal of people who can join in, because I feel like some of the, some of those ones that you think, how the fuck like Minecraft, how is this speed run? And then you get drawn into watching it and then you, I don't know, learn something. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I totally <laughs> learned. I would walk from what I watched and was like, well, the Minecraft speed run was just crazy because it was glitchless random world seed so it's not like the guy pre- could pre-prepare for the world he was going to be randomly given right he wasn't going to do anything kind of crazy glitching so it's just like oh, this dude just knows how to use the systems really well to beat the game in an hour and i think he beat it in just over an hour nice and not die which i learned that when minecraft you can make a bed if you make a bed in the ender which is like the alternate world uh it, and you try to sleep in it it explodes <laughs> Because that is how they just, because you can't, they don't want you sleeping in the Ender. So they just make the bed explode. But the bed explodes, deals damage to enemies, and that's how they beat the dragon. Oh my god. Exploding beds. Of course. Yeah, of that's course. Just, I'm just like, <laughs> what? Um, And uh, my kids and I learned something new that day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, that's what was so entertaining about the uh, Chrono Trigger, is just how much, not only about the... Uh, what he was doing, but kind of how the game I don't know, is put together, and yeah, some talking about some of the music and some of the characters, and oh, I just I'm just surprised how they can do something that is so I feel like mentally taxing, and at the same time kind of entertain and talk yeah. through things, and then that guy uh, Puexel at the end, just people screaming and shouting behind him while he's you know getting toward the end of the game. Yeah, too bad they didn't let the all the cutscenes at the end run through though. No, they no. kind of cut that stream off, but or cut him off to do the the thank you stuff at the end. Yeah, yeah, they were they were done. the The run was over. Yep. Um, my God, that was insane. But I mean, did you? I mean, listening through that, there was a point whenever it was like the face and the two hands. You don't even remember that boss's name. Um, yeah. And they're like, "Oh yeah, we just learned from like people doing randomizers of Chrono Trigger. This is a new like a new strategy. We just realized is that you can do." attack off of robo in the middle and it will only hit the face oh, I didn't and they see that ne- and they never knew that until a few months ago and it cut hmm. like he's like yeah it cut like 15 15 seconds off the run oh wow but it was like something that people so there's people are still discovering new strategies to these games yeah i thought i was listening to the part where they're talking about the berserker strategy where like doing the berserker raised your elemental defense or something like that and did your Raise yep. your damage. Some of it. it's a thing that I didn't use in the game, but having them, hearing them talk about, it, I was thinking, oh, I probably should have used that skill. Um, and it makes me want to go back and explore it. Yeah, but then I, we talked. I think it was last week or the week before talking about speedrunning, and you were talking about 
or we were talking about Witcher 3 speed yeah. running, that would be freaking cool. And then you sent the uh, <laughs> a picture because I was like, let's see. And yeah, well, speedrun.com. There's like a yeah. Witcher, Witcher 3. Yep. Let's see if I can pull it back. I think it was I like three was hours. Like, yeah, it was like right around three hours is the, yeah. is the world best right now. Yeah, I'm sure two that's, hours, 58 minutes. Yep. I mean, sure, that's skipping, skipping all cutscenes and everything. And oh, yeah. Like, um, but I'm very, cu- and then there's a video there. You can click the video and it's right. on YouTube for three hours. And I'm, I, at some point, I'm going to pull it out because I just, I'm very curious. No, I've got to watch that. I'm going to How they like, do night. that. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm glad that they have this, this mechanism online where you can upload your videos and get them kind yeah. of verified. Um, but I just have to see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure a lot of those don't have the commentary going along with them. It might just be them playing. Oh, yeah. Just the run. Just the run. But like you said, there's something very curious about what? How? How do you do well, that? How do you take this game that I spent a hundred plus hours in and beat it in three? Right. Well, and then that's the main story. Then you go to the Hearts of Stone is thirty three minutes and Blood and Wine is forty four minutes. Blood and like, Wine in forty four? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but if I I would love to try that. I'll, I think I'll just watch for now and see. Yeah. See what see what I see. <laughs> and that's something about watching this that is cool is I see that there's a lot of people that probably watch Game Sun Quick and are like and I see a lot of the the runners and the couch really encourage people to join the community and give it a shot. They're like, no, choose a game. Try it. It's a lot of fun. Get into the community. And uh, there was one where there were people, they were trying to give suggestions of like where to start, like games to start with. And they're like, Super Mario World was a really good one to start with. Mm. Um, they had suggestions of just different games that are like, hey, if you want to speed run stuff, this is a great place to start. Um and wow. it does, I, it's not something I particularly want to do because I right. cannot beat my head against the same game for that long. Um, mm-hmm. uh, mastery is not important to me, so <laughs> well, <I feel> like <laughs> speed running is not bad. Is bad for me. I feel like you stop enjoying the game, or could stop enjoying the game, even though you're still enjoying the running and the exactly. challenge of that. And I think that's what it switches to: is less about the game itself and more about the run and beating those personal bests and times and. Um, really just becoming very much like any other i guess athlete in that regard right it's just training and muscle memory yeah um and repetition practice yeah i'm looking at this uh the website you sent me about witcher 3 and then the one guy actually uh wrote a guide wrote his detailed notes about each section i'm just gonna read a little bit here uh for white orchard he says when entering the prologue attack roll to the door pick up the key attack roll down the stair spam dialogue only option two until gameplay starts hop on roach immediately run toward the river and follow path until the bridge dialogue with peasant two one like choose option two, choose option option one, right into White Orchard Inn, dialogue with innkeeper, one, four, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like step by step by step. And it has like the dialogue options that you have to choose. And I assume that's because the answers are shorter, maybe. Most likely shorter, or if it has consequences later on, it causes a shorter path later on. And that's the interesting thing about Witcher 3 is like to think about how all the dialogue kind of, you know, the, the ramifications of all of your choices, how they splinter out and come yeah. back like, to look at that all and say, okay, what's the quickest path through this dialogue tree for the, yeah. not only the shortness of the speech, but also the shortness of the game. That's yeah. great. Oh, I'm sure the, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I yeah, just find really it fascinating details. that people will focus that much on a, a game. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> and as a developer, it's really cool to see that people will pick a part of a game like that. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I was super excited this year and watching it again, and I can't wait for January. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's interesting for me because when, you know, you guys are watching it or some other friends are watching it and tell me different things, like I I kind of catalog it and I usually watch them later. I think yeah. Chrono Trigger and Chrono Trigger, uh, we uh, punch out where the guy played we punch out completely blindfolded. Uh, That's just ridiculous. Doing shit that I couldn't do with my eyes open. Like just crazy. Um, and then when he would make mistakes, he'd have to like get back into the mode basically while trying to avoid getting hit. Uh, too much without being able to like visually kind of recalibrate it's just fucking that was an insane run i watched about 45 minutes of it this morning really crazy um and then i popped on uh, uh curse of the moon bloodstained curse of the moon yeah. while we've been talking and kind of watching it as it's going and watching what they're doing right now just the way that they're the, the way that game's set up bloodstained curse of the moon you have four yeah. characters and you can freely switch between them and just watching them manipulate <laughs> those characters <laughs> is really blowing my mind right now um I feel like the permutations are so vast that it'd be kind of hard to zoom in or uh, kind of nail what would be the quickest. Yeah. I have a feeling we're going to see 
what's the is bloodstained uh or, ritual of the night ritual of the night i bet we'll see that at uh awesome games done quick in 2020 yeah that sounds about right i give, wish that give the people switch... like six months to figure out yeah i'm not getting it for the switch right now <sighs> not God, even I touching it, it. Were, i wish it were better it sounds just abysmal uh yeah and then i mean it's a unity engine game i believe or is it unreal i don't know um they didn't make the engine and certain oh it's ue4 and yeah mm. i can totally see it being uh it takes a lot of optimization to make ue work well on the switch yeah um well it's sad too because bloodstain curse of the moon worked fucking flawlessly on the yeah switch. but that's a 2d game right yeah yep, it's yep. not it's not 3d pixel eight, you know pixel art kind of it's pixel it's not 3d environments and poly right. like no like yep. it should work that will work anywhere yeah um yeah. what they're trying to do with bloodstain is crazy with all the lighting and everything and it's just one of those things of like um i think it's very what was the other ue4 game uh yoshi's uh oh yeah woolly world woolly oh, no 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 fuck no um, um crafted world crafted world uh was using ue4 as well but you had that was internal nintendo right. doing stuff like knowing how to optimize ue to uh work there. on the switch hardware, and like yeah. yeah their hardware yeah uh the blunt save devs don't have that luxury right. so i'm sure there's a hopefully we'll get lots of optimizations the one thing about y- using ue though as an engine is they have the entire source code for the engine so when they say they're going to op- be optimizing they have the ability to optimize right so well i'm crossing my fingers that in four or five months it will be uh very reasonable on the switch although digital foundry put up a thing um a video about it and said it was actually pretty decent on the switch yeah oh that's good they're, they're like there's a couple frame drip brought places but it's not they put up a basically a thing going it's not as bad as people are saying like here we go like it, it will get better but it's not at all unplayable so well, i have a lot to play right now so i can totally wait but that's yeah exactly that I want to play eventually so maybe i will wait and maybe it'll be better on switch yeah um but yeah cool well, that's uh, speed running next yeah. next <laughs> next year. Anthony and I will be talking about our speed running. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Uh, but why don't we talk about what we have been playing this week, though? Uh, I, I game jammed most of the week on mm-hmm. a little thing, um, which I have no way to really show anyone. But it was cool. Yeah, made made a thing. It was great. Um, but the speed running uh, SGDQ, they did Octopath Traveler. <laughs> they did. Yeah. What? I didn't see that. Not the whole thing. It was basically oh, okay. people, but the, we're talking oh, about shit, good, is, cool yeah. incentives. The incentive was a bid war for which story to play, which oh, character cool. story to play. Uh-huh. Um, and they did Alphans uh, oh. um, was the winner. And so it was chapters one through four of a single character. And they did it in an hour and 15 minutes. Nice. And it was ridiculous because, I mean, they're so underleveled. So incredibly under, like we're talking like 30, 40 levels right. under leveled and they still, and they beat, still the, wow. beat it. And you start seeing just the like insane complexity and how you can manipulate the battle system and break bosses. I mean, there's a few places where they're like they had to restart a few times. They're like, if we get in here and this, our character is not the first in the initiative line, this certain care our one, they had one character that needed to go first in the battle. Uh, for the final boss, and if they're not, they just will insta die. Oh dang! So they're just like it's RNG. How many, many times we need to restart this battle until we get this one person to this one right. character to be the one? And we've given them all the speed items we can so that to give the best chance. But it took them, I think, three or four times. Um, and then it was just a crazy technical fight for that final chapter four boss. Um, I can't imagine that is a short fight though if you're so under leveled. No, but they figure it out. They use a lot of items. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just like there just basically comes a pattern to the thing, uh, and they actually were going through it and they died one time because he messed up the pattern <sighs> of like he completely used the wrong item and he's like shit okay and then they didn't meet with the next time and just wiped the party in one hit. Um, right. but it was crazy. But I was watching it and one all the music and all the I was like I need to play Octopath again. I why did I stop? And so that's what oh, I've that's been playing. Loaded up. And nice. I loaded up and I've beat. I've uh, been working through chapter three of a bunch of the... I just finished the third chapter three of the eight so far. Maybe a, or a fourth. Mm-hmm. So I'm working through it and leveling again and taking my time. And uh, 
that game is it's just a gorgeous game the style the sound the battle system all amazing the story is i think i talked to someone today about it and they're like it's a saga game um which was old rpgs the saga frontier series yeah and that's what it is it actually isn't more of a final fantasy game it is the eight individual stories and it's very much maps to the the saga frontier style of of jrpg and does it in terms of the battle system or in terms of the storytelling storytelling oh, okay. where it's distinct stories for characters like right the eight characters their stories don't intermingle it's eight distinct stories. Oh, and that's the thing that people had such a hard time with, that they yes. really feel like it should have wrapped together at the end, and it didn't. Nope. And I and for you, that's fine. Like the I don't care. I mean, if, if okay. I understand it, if I think of it as a, this is telling an anthology of stories, Yes, correct. fine, I can deal with that. Mm-hmm. I think it's going in with the expectation that they were all going to be wrapped together um, probably was more detrimental to people. Um, yeah, and I feel like it's fine that they're not, as long as those individual stories are good. And I wouldn't say... Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this. I don't think any of them so far are amazing. Like, right. oh my god, these are the best stories in RPG. But I don't, I haven't come across one that I'm like, this is bad. It's like, no, yeah. some of them are, I'm like, less interested in the character than others. But uh, there are some that are, very, are I would put up on the good, very good side of things. Okay. And then the, generally the writing is good and the voice acting is good. Um, yeah, none that I'm like, oh, these are terrible. They're a little tropey and just your normal kind of story tropes going around of like, oh, this is the like fallen knight storyline okay yeah um although it throws some twists in there here and there on it but they don't try to deviate too far and go crazy they're they're just trying to tell these more i guess they're little simpler stories but with with cool characters because the characters do make up for a lot of it yeah i feel like people said the same thing about uh tales of Bes- what the fuck do i want to play Bes- Vesper- vesperia vesperia i think it is but like it's a great story, like one of the best Tales games, but there's still a little tropey for anime stuff, and yeah. I don't fucking know anime tropes, so I don't notice at all, and it's fine. So even if like there are tropey things, as long as it's still pretty well told yeah. or still pretty interesting, then uh, I don't know how much it matters. Yeah, it doesn't. It's as long as you enjoy the story, and it's just knowing. I think the writers know if you're going to do a more stereotypical story, you you got to add some flavor to it. Got to do a little bit more than just tell that same story, or people will get right. bored. Um, right. I think the only thing with the game is is that it gets a bit grindy um, between chapters. Like, I'm going through the chapter 3 ones, and they're all a couple levels f- from each other, like, so starting at, like, 32, and then the next one's at 34 and 36, um, right. going through these characters. And so you pretty much need to progress through them that way, or you're going to be grinding a lot to get to chapter 4 uh, fights and areas, because they're, like, level 45 to 50. Um, and grinding takes a while, because not... I love the battle system. The battle system is not great for uh, getting very quickly through the fights. Right. They take a while. They're very strategic fights, even random battles, um, because you're trying to balance out like when you're going to be breaking thing, breaking enemies to to get them vulnerable and um, the whole thing. So it's a lot of fun. It's the most tactical of that enemies on one side of the screen, heroes on other side of the screen game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. But that does mean that your random battles are slow. Or are slower than than like ATB battles or things like that. Right, and you're talking about in terms of like random encounters. Yeah, random some random encounters like you will because you can't turn that off, right? Nope. Yeah, and there's not a ton of them, but they're there, and you you don't you definitely need to keep paying attention to the random encounters. Yeah. Um, you can't you can't just be like oh just spam attack and we'll win. Like no, you you still need to hit their weak points and know which spells to use when. Um. But you have more knowledge by the end later. Like, he keeps track of, like, when you encounter... If you've encountered enemies before, you can you still get to see what their weaknesses are once you've once you've done it once. So... That's kind of why I feel like the speedruns for RPGs are just so much more mentally taxing. Because yeah. obviously there's things to consider and frames to consider for, like, a Mario World or some other platformer. Celeste, for example. But there's the movement plus how the different skills or whatever you have interact with the um weaknesses or the strengths of the boss and the items you have to use to refill your health or, or uh, negate effects or whatever and it's just like so many layers and levels yes. to it that is just really awe-inspiring to me yeah the the amount of like information that the jrpg speedrunners keep in their head while doing yep. it is pretty mm-hmm. insane and then um, while doing it explaining it all pretty clearly yeah. uh, and that i definitely not all speedrunners can do that that's when talking about the GDQs, 
they definitely get people that are like, oh yeah, we can talk while doing this. Like, right. and we are good at it, that at explaining what we're doing, what's going on. Um, cause I'm sure that does not come easy to a number of runners. So I don't know. That's so the, that's pretty much the only game I've been playing, which has been Octopath since, uh, whatever day that started. Um, <laughs> yeah. Spurred uh, you to pick it Friday, up. Yeah, later on Friday. And I was like, all right, I'm going to pick it back up and I'm going to play it. And I've probably I've put about five hours into it since then. Mm, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, just as I've been in the car. It's great on the Switch because I can just have it in the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I had ferry rides today um, and uh, got some Octopath in there. So everything's better on Switch as long it is, as it everything works. is better on Switch. Let's <laughs> just I, I mean, you've sent me the, the other article that now has been the president of Square Enix. I've seen two him give two interviews where they're like, yep, we're getting our back catalog together. Um, we're really trying to focus on, we have a team internally getting our back catalog back together, find out where all the games are, what state they're in, and we want to make them all available in some way. Final Fantasy VI. I, I, honestly, I'm just looking at it, I was like, can you make sure that they're all on the Switch? Yeah, Can exactly. the Switch just be my JRPG machine? Because I'd, be okay, I'd be completely okay with that. I think it really is taking over for the Vita in that regard. Uh-huh. So get Chrono Trigger on there. Get I mean we, you know, we just got uh, several games from Square Enix uh, on there. So let's get some yeah. get some more of their stuff. We're on gonna there. get Final Fantasy VIII on there sometime this yep. year. We Which is nine. crazy. That's we have seven. Not come out anywhere else. No, um, I mean, there's. I think you can still get it for PC. Oh, really? It's on PC. Okay. Uh, it was always. It, yeah, and I'm pretty sure that the the version that they have is probably the PC version. Like, is what yeah. they're using on the on the. Uh, remaster because that's likely the only code they can find if they could find it right um so yeah we have seven eight and nine on the switch we have 10 10 2 uh we have 12 now so we have pretty much all those modern ones so it's just going back i'm like just let's let's start going through one through six let's get them out um and yeah i still hold to the thing of do it in octopath's engine change, yeah change the battle system but use octopath's engine um but Which actually should is... actually tell you, Octopath is Unreal Engine as well. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it's UE4. But but what they're saying isn't that they're going to remake them. They're just going to put the original ones on there? Or uh, who knows? They them? just want them available. They yeah. they want they want to make sure that the back catalog is maintained and games are available for people to purchase. Right. Um, because, like, right now, like, let's say I wanted to play Chrono Trigger. Uh, where if I wanted to go buy it right now, if I didn't own it anywhere, I could just get it on PC. I mean, you can buy the used version on DS, I guess. Yeah, if but like that's not manufactured anymore. You'd have to go Correct. find that used. Right. So if you just like, hey, I without going used, I just want to play this game. I think PC is the only place you can get it. Yep. I don't think it exists on any modern console beyond that. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I think the same goes for final a lot of the old Pixel Final Fantasies. Um. So I think you can get six on the PC as well. Not that anyone loves it because they changed the art style. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought that was because it was the iOS port. It is the iOS port. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I guess you can get them on iOS. That's the thing. There's a ton of them on iOS. Right. Um, and iPads. I just don't. That's not. I want a controller in my hand. Yeah, exactly. Well, not the idea of what to play for me. No, no. Um, Which I know that's being picky. Like if there was a game that like was available nowhere else. Yeah, I'd probably suck it up. But uh, which one did I, I play a crap to. ton on? I played on uh, my iPad 2 so long ago, Final Fantasy Tactics. And how I that rebought worked? it. It worked great, actually. Huh, it wasn't um, once you learned that how the controls basically work. Because you mean you're just tapping on grid, like unit, tap. Yeah. Tap unit, tap where you want it to go. And then menus, you didn't have to tap on the menu. You could press your finger down anywhere on the screen when a menu's up and drag your finger up and down to cycle what you're selecting on the menu um it's hard to explain but once you understood that that was the way it worked it was mm-hmm. really fast to menu in that game um in the in the uh ios version and it fixed the skip. frame skips the ps1 was... and vita had uh and psp had uh frame rate issues Oops. like dropping frames or what uh yeah there were like summons would happen like the frame rate would dip uh and it was a uh, what was it? It was had something to do with the the CD read speed on the the PS One, um, and it was still in there in the PSP. But the iOS one iOS version fixed that so that all the spells ran at full frame rate and didn't drop. Um, I wonder if that would all make the iOS version like the premier place to speed run that game. Probably not. Maybe. Yeah. It seems like some speed fixes there. 
I want to see a speedrun of that. That could be cool. Fucking I'm sure there's blood. some stupid broken stuff for Final Fantasy Tactics speedrunning. Uh, oh, yeah. I would imagine there's broken stuff for a lot of those older games. Oh, man, this Bloodstained Curse of the Moon just finished. I watched the entire thing while we were talking. <laughs> it's fucking great. Oh, my God. But the counter, like the right now it's at $177,000. It didn't really move much during the entire run. Oh, yeah. I should have donated during that time. It accelerated as the game, as like time. Went, but what time of day was that happening? Yeah, exactly. And interest in the game, I think, has something to do with it. Yeah. Oh, totally. Because well. that's when you get viewers. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. There's a leaderboard for Final Fantasy Tactics. I bet it's going to be super fast. Uh, three hours and 58 minutes and 12 seconds is the current mm. uh, world premi- uh, world best. So you can beat The Witcher 3 faster. Yes. <laughs> crazy one year ago was the last one that was put up guides oh. yeah that's where the, the crazy notes were in that guide section tool compilation this is ridiculous it's so cool though battle mechanics guide ancient wow boss of you wow okay yeah not only do they spend a lot of time honing their skills but also sharing their knowledge like that through those notes yeah cool. i mean this is definitely a thing where it doesn't feel like anyone in the community of these uh um, it seems like the speed, especially speedrun.com, like where they go through, like it is a community about sharing. Like they right. want to celebrate people's success of being faster, but they want, they want to show how it was done because they're not trying they- to stay the best. They're like, that's cool. Beat me. Let's, let's see if we can get this lower. Like, this right. Lower. And I guess that makes sense when like the, the reward is simply just doing it. There's no monetary reward that you're kind of fighting people over to get. Yeah. Right. Like speedrun yeah. is just for the joy of doing it, I think. Yeah. So uh so for me this week um i don't think i played that much i did a lot of reading and writing finished um fahrenheit 451 which i'm embarrassed that i didn't read that book until now because it's fucking fantastic um but uh mario maker 2 came in yesterday nice so i've been able to play probably two hours of it um kind of dicked around a little bit with online courses that people have uh, put up and to be honest they're kind of fun um, and I'm feeling pretty good about myself because a lot of the courses that are up there, like on top of popular um, or trending or whatever, um, the, the completion rate's like 10 percent. They're really low because, um, you know, people put hard ones up at first, I think. Um, and I beat them all, uh, which was really awesome. I played three or four and I beat all of them. There were there were some significant challenges. And I feel like people the difficulty in, in these um, user generated levels is not consistent. Where like I feel like towards the middle, there was a really hard part. And once you got past that hard part, then the rest was easy. Okay. Um, so I feel like people kind of gave up at the hard part. Um, so I feel like that uh, completion rate should be higher. But anyway, um, I played that a little bit. And then I did the uh, uh, the story mode. So basically, you're building okay. Peach's castle, and then it gets destroyed. And then you have to build it again. The only way to build it is to collect coins. And you collect coins by playing through... Uh, basically Nintendo generated levels and the Nintendo generated levels are generated specifically to give you ideas for how to build your own levels. So every level will have some sort of new mechanic and you kind of look at it and go, what the fuck you can do that in a Mario game. And then you realize, Oh, I can do that when I build the game. Um, so for example, the first level, which I gave to my wife to, for her to play and she got to the first screen and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, there's a, basically a bullet bill cannon and it shoots out mushrooms. Um, so you know, the yeah. big mushrooms that make you big, super, super mushrooms. She was like, what? That, that never happened before. And then she jumped on a music note and it made a really weird noise. And she's like, well, that's not that's not normal. Um, so she was experiencing all those weird things that don't usually happen in a Mario game. And then I was like, that's what Nintendo is telling you. Like, that's weird stuff that you would notice. And then you could say, oh, I can do that in the game that I want to build. Um, so I probably played 20 or 30 levels so far. I think there are 100. Wow. Um, yeah, through the story mode. So I'm probably only like 15 percent of the way through the story mode. Um, and they're all shortish, um, but really, I mean, it's Nintendo polish, right? Yeah. Um, and then just showing you weird shit that you can do with all the tool set. Um, yeah, so not much more to report other than the um, Mario 3D World uh, style is really cool. It's the first time that that kind of um, the cat powers and the climbing the trees and all those yeah. kind of different abilities and that art style has actually been in a 2D side scroller. So um, you're kind of getting a little bit of a different version of 3D World from Nintendo in this game. On top of all the, the maker stuff, I haven't started making anything yet. I've just been playing what there is, um, getting ideas based upon what Nintendo's doing or what other people are doing online. But there's a yeah. there's an achievement system where if you do like if you 
download a, a course online, I got an achievement. If I beat a course from online, I got an achievement. A couple other things to get an achievement. And the achievements give you outfits for your me character. So your me character kind of represents your maker in Mario Maker 2. Okay. So then you, you're getting like, you know, t-shirts with bullet bills or, you know, invincibility stars or whatever. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. I think for the completionist at heart, there, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of fun stuff there. Um, but it's fucking great. I mean, it's much better than Mario Maker 1 and Mario Maker 1 was fantastic. So there's just so many more items and so many more things you can do and build. Um, and it's fun to see the community. It's just fun to have this fucking game on Switch where people are actually... There's a lot of people playing it. <laughs> exactly. Like, own the fucking machine as opposed to the Wii U, which was, you know, 13 million yeah. mo- at most. Yeah. And so how many people bought Mario Maker? I think it was like three or four. So this has already got way more than that. So it's great. Yeah. I think whenever you, you mentioned like the, the Vita being the, the JRPG machine, mm-hmm. the Switch is going to be it because the Switch actually has a crap ton more of the user base. Oh, yeah. So there's so right. much even more incentive to bring the games to the Switch. Right. Um, and just thinking about you as a collector, me as a collector, like wanting to have like the best games in one system that you can take anywhere. Like this is like the, you know, if it were a little more powerful, it'd be a little better. But overall, yeah. it's just such a fantastic system. Yeah. So now you have Mario yeah. Maker and on it and they can just go crazy. And I bet you'll see a ton more levels now. Just yeah. Like, Once it's in more people's hands, you know. Yeah. Oh, other thing I played this week, uh, I played a bit of Wargroove. I uh, played two or okay. three more chapters and I've gotten a lot better at it just by slowing the fuck down yep. <laughs> like really just slow down and be a lot more strategic and it was a lot easier um that was my solution instead of turning the difficulty down it was just slow down <laughs> slow calm down, down think about what you're doing uh-huh. like really a, think about what you're doing <laughs> yeah i was trying to like i don't know like brute force my way through something and like trying to see like i can absorb the damage it's fine no i can't they died so yeah um yeah it was it was quite good i'm hoping to get through that by the end of the year because that's got to be on the top five of my list this year because it's such a yeah the style of game is what i really like although fire emblem is going out next next month so it's we'll true see. less than a month for fire emblem i know very excited uh actually i have exactly like 30 days <laughs> for me, oh yeah you get it later. yeah yeah i'm gonna i think i have it pre-ordered on amazon i think so i pre-ordered uh this one and it came the day after uh release which should have come like three or four days after release because i didn't do any special shipping or whatever so it was kind of nice um, to get it so quickly, and I got it with Fire Emblem Warriors, which was on sale for like twenty oh, bucks. Nice. Yeah, so if, I, I liked it when I rented it before, but I wasn't going to pay sixty bucks for it, so it's it hit a nice price, and I was happy to get it. That's cool. And I'm not playing it yet, but I will. And uh, I think that's it for me. I think that is. Oof, what a week! It's been a week. I love these weeks. And yeah. Now back to normal non GDQ weeks. Except where you can go back and watch the videos of things you didn't watch. That's true. There's a lot that I didn't get to watch. So, yeah. and Titanfall I mean, 2 did a run. Holy shit. Yeah, I need to see that one. Um, yeah. God, that game's great. There's so many cool things in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's it for this week. Well, that was episode 199 then. That means next week is episode 200. We got a couple of small special things cooking for 200. So, we're happy to, uh, we'll be happy to bring those to you next week. Yeah. Probably give a game or two. Um, so, we will see you next week for episode 200. Good night, everyone. Good night. Whoops. Sorry, everybody. Realize that uh, we're actually going to have next week off because of travel plans and everything going on. So the our 200th episode will be on July 15th. Um, so and everyone enjoy their 4th of July if you're in the United States. Uh, everyone else in the world, just have a good week. Uh, talk to everyone on the 15th. <laughs>